Welcome, Kevin, to the Lady website pages. It's a great pleasure to talk with you about this new album and more things related to the metal world. Starting, how old the band were being during this pandemic situation? And with this, with this, with this, with this one, did you take the advantage to write new album for this situation? Because all musicians from for, from Lock Up are busy with a lot of projects. Yeah, I mean, no, we 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 planned on doing it anyways, but. Um... You know, it allotted us the time to. Well, I mean, it's six one way, half dozen another. It, it took X amount of time because of the complications of the, the of being locked in. But also, you know, there was the fact that no one was really doing um, any touring, so to speak. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. You entered the band at 2013 and the record demonized in 2000 and you recorded the, the, the demonized in 2017. So were you uh, the main frontman in Look Up at that time? So now with this, the, the drags of Hades, you and Thomas share the microphone. So how does it feel to share songs for this new album and how will And how will do look up for live performance? Because after the last At The Gates album, Thomas probably won't have much time to do a tour with you. With you. What are we? Well, I mean, um, I, first of all, I don't have any problem at all. I mean, Thomas is a friend, you know, so, I mean, it, to me, Lock Up is just about good friends getting together, playing music, you know, so it's it's no 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 problem with me i don't have any kind of weird trip or anything like that uh i've always followed the rule of thumb of what sounds good sounds good and what sounds bad is is not good <laughs> so uh i think it sounds really good together personally but um in terms of playing live you know um well we do have an agent and we you know we are working on things To, to try and, and get together some of it. But the problem that we're having right now is just that with the waves of whatever this thing is, you know, it's hard to like organize anything because, you know, like uh, until until we globally accept it as, as an endemic and not pandemic, it's something that is going to be here and just try and work your world around it. Um, you know, uh, protocols and and uh, rules, this, that, and the other constantly change. It's hard to, like, uh, it's hard to uh, organize anything if you get over to Europe and then all of a sudden, say, Belgium and Holland go into partial lockdown and they're not doing, you're stuck in a truck stop, like, you know, for six, ten days in a European tour, which no one can really afford to do. So most people are just, most bands are trying to just go in and do like strategic things here and there. But uh, touring is by all means has not normalized or maybe the new norm, maybe something totally different. Who knows? Okay, okay. The news that shocked me a lot, a lot into the lockup was the departure from Nicholas Baker. Because he's one, because he's one of the few drummers in the world who has a personal touch and sound. But for this album, you recruit Adam Jarvis, another beast in, in the drum. So how was the transitions from Nicholas' exit to Adam's entrance? And from your point of view, do you think there is a substantial change at a musical level compared to the previous albums on drums? Um. I mean, you nailed it. There's there's drummers, and then there's people that play drums, and 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 Barker and um, and Adam are both like real drummers. They, you know, they do their homework. They come in, and when they record, you press press record, and it happens. It's not like, uh, you know, with with technology nowadays, a lot of drummers just sort of work on parts, and they just kind of glue and paste parts together in the, in the computer and stuff like that. And they're not worried about the footwork and stuff too much because they're trying to, you know, whatever. And they'll just email the kick drum into place and stuff like that. Those guys just fucking play drums. And, um, and, uh, you know, with, uh, with Barker and Adam, man, they, you know, their, their brain is mathematical and exact. Um, so, 
at, really it's just apples and apples with uh with those two you know one plays a certain style and the other one plays a different just a little bit different style but they're both extraordinarily talented at what they do and there's no to me as long as the drummer plays on the beat and and has a, a match under his ass and is playing with intent that's the band you want to be in so for me it was very very easy going and i would say a hundred percent the record sounds the way it does because adam absolutely had his shit in order when he went in and tracked his tracks you know it has a sense of urgency and uh and that's what's needed with this kind of music mm -hmm. okay talking about nick again i read an interview with him from metal ejection where he says that the mother has the mother metal or mother death metal has become soulless for that reason what is your opinion about this statement and can we relate this concept with lock up because it's a band band born during the last years of 90s and it has a great development during these 20 years 21 years well, i don't know man i mean i think he's to me like the soulless aspect is is kind of what we were talking about where everything is just sort of put into place perfectly and it's not really played perfectly it sounds clinically on point but the heart and soul's not there like you know for that your drummer has to play from point a to point b and complete the song you know um a lot of digital recording has made to me music in general a little soulless you know I like to feel like I'm sitting in a room listening to a band play because that's where the heart of the song is. And um, I can't really vouch for what he meant by soulless, but, but you know, also, um, you know, Barker was also drifting into being more where his heart's been for a long time, which is like with the hardcore music and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, that's that's really, truly what we're, what happened with the sh shift in drums is that Barker wanted to play hardcore. He's in Borstal. He still plays in, in, in Brujeria, which is sort of not death metal or hardcore. I don't know what Brujeria is, but uh, um, uh, it's it's it's, <laughs> it's it's Brujo's theatrics, man, you know, but uh, but. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, he was he was into that kind of stuff. Matter of fact, the last stuff he recorded technically with Lockup, which was Anton, was a bunch of hardcore covers, crumb suckers, that kind of thing. And it never never really came about. But um, but you know, to my point, you know, like you know, he was he was drifting away from what he was making a shift in what he wanted to do, man. And good for him, man. I mean, it's very difficult at our age to um, make that kind of change. You know, you're known for like being in a cradle, cradle or demo, or you know, uh, and but that's not where your heart is. So you know, he he made a change. You know, and and um, I'm very happy for him. He seems completely happy. He's uh, taking good care of himself now, and. As a friend, that's all you want with your friends is them for them to be happy and take good care of themselves, you know? Okay, okay, okay. Talking about one subject, usually when a band release their first album, many reviewers and fans think that the album is if that album is the best word of the band. But for the at the same time, for the album, usually the last album or the new one is the best work from them. So what do you think of this idea of reviewer, reviewer and fans? And what this new album, do you think is, do you think this cliche of this new one is the best work from Look Up? I think it's all different, man. I mean, like, I understand it's like, you know, usually the fan is going to, the first thing to turn them on to band Say, for instance, if you're talking about Mastodon, they're going to talk about those early relapse records. You know, they're, they're, oh, they're, they're not blah, blah, blah. Well, you know, then, you know, they they did a, a record ju that just came out that's, you know, borderline like a metal version of Pink Floyd, you know, which is very far from where they were when they first recorded. And obviously they they 
grew as musicians and you know i look i you know i look at extreme conditions and i, I you know i I'm, I'm proud of it but you know i was a kid i really didn't know what i was doing you know i was just being you know just sitting in front of a microphone and squawking at the top of my lungs you know and had no idea I had any. over time you learn how to control your breathing and and what your voice is capable of doing and and how to you know better what you do so obviously from the musician standpoint they they like to think that you know that they've evolved and that you know what they're doing is uh you know a better version of what they did you know in my case i don't even know 30 years ago <laughs> but uh okay. but oh, um yeah i mean like i understand the fan concept of being into peter or or you know those periods and stuff like that but i also look at lockup as is just having different they just kind of explore different levels of uh of that kind of music you know what i mean you know demonization were the you know like i'm i sang on that and this was an entirely different record you know um we tried to do something a little bit more uh this is more, uh, I don't know. There was, you know, demonization was more produced. This is uh, more like in the room kind of vibe, you know? But, you know, as a musician, you never really wanted, I mean, some people do, but for me personally, I have no interest in recording the same record over and over again. I already did that, I already experienced it. And also there's the aspect of, um, it's where you're at personally as as a collective at that particular point in time it's like a snapshot of of where you're at a picture an audio uh an audio recording of where you're at mentally and musically at that particular point in time so that said you know given the circumstances of this particular record it's it's special to me and and as as a I don't know, as a as a, a a document of of a life event, you know. It's uh it was extremely bizarre circumstances recorded, but the music we recorded was definitely inspired from from everything. There was a lot of darkness, you know. Okay, okay. So you as you as you said, you and Shane in many ways for me especially you did the basements for today's grindcore style with napple with nipple that and brutal truth so how do you see the panorama style with new bands and and more so because in the recent years grindcore is one of the musical styles that has many ambitions of experimentation progressions technicality and more things related it could be said that this style with many is a many with many paths that will continue evolving it always will be you know there's some more technical aspects and there's like the uh you know to me the one of the stranger uh um uh, uh evolutions of of grind is is you know the bassless grind band where it's just a guitar a drummer and a vocal you know where as you know grind core to me has to do with the grinding bass sound that's where it came from you know so you've taken the bass out of it entirely so where's the grind i don't know <laughs> but uh you know there's gore grind and this that, and the other and it's like any other kind of genre and you know i had someone asked me the other day that you know actually yesterday but um you know what do i think about you know the bands that the newer bands that and it's 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 interesting to me to watch how they take elements of this and create their own thing you know the whole gore grind thing is kind of a weird thing to me but i i think it's interesting the the elements that they pull from and um you know create their own thing you know so you know it's like any other kind of music man it's 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 you know there was the beatles and and you know obviously music moved on from there <laughs> you know if, i'm not saying that they started all music i'm just saying that like you know it just music has a way of uh influencing others and adapting their own interest in creating their own style 
it's it's interesting to me to see where people come from it you know you know i i remember that you know when cannibal corpse was doing their thing and chris started doing those high screams and stuff like that he was talking he was talking extreme conditions and uh you know it's interesting to see where people pull from you know and how they adapt it and what they do mm -hmm. Great, great. So as I said in the first question, we will talk about other matters into the met into the extreme world. So starting with these kind of questions, the way of listening to music has changed drastically in recent years because the digital platforms have prompted fans, especially younger ones, to only choose one, two, three, or maximum four songs in per album. So and there is an even talk that bands should no longer record albums if they don't need it and just record singles for the perhaps for the for the requests for the label, for the for the fans, for the digital platforms. So how do you think this could affect the way to, we made that we make music in the near future? And what bands need to do to motivate the listeners to hear all songs in an album? I don't know, man. I, I don't really subscribe to that thinking, but like I come from a pre-digital era, you know, Need to Control was, I mean, well, Need to Control was recorded on, on tape, so it was Extreme Conditions. Um, I don't come from that era. I don't really understand that era. I'm not a YouTuber. I don't uh, stream. I don't have Spotify account. It, to me, uh, as a musician, it's it's illegal to to stream music through those kind of outlets because they're, it's completely destructive towards what we do. Um, I, to me, I'm I'm I don't want to say resentful, but I'm not stoked at all with it. I mean, people need to understand that like songs just don't magically happen on Spotify. It takes a rehearsal room, it takes an idea, it takes months of developing that idea, and then it takes a, it takes money to actually go in and record it. So when people go and stream it and you get paid 0 0.006 cents per stream, it does the band no good. That mentality eventually will lead to where there won't, won't be any bands. There won't be the records that you want to hear because, uh, you know, the, the, you know, it, it's not easy. I mean, everyone has these ideas that like, you know, like, oh, you're in a touring band and you must be rich as fuck. Well, I'm going to go and tile a shower in about uh, 30 minutes. That's what I do for a living. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, uh, uh, you know, um, I, I do music because it's part of who I am. And by, by streaming by streaming and and Spotify world and that sort of thing and that creating your own playlist and this that and the other uh it's it's counterproductive and will eventually there won't be songs to put on Spotify yeah that's correct that's correct so into this matter we talk about the the musical platforms um however there is another trend and other side of the another side in which old formats such a cassette or vinyl are reverted which together with the cd become practically only for the collectors or a collector's item so do you consume any of these formats and what is your favorite and what do you think about this trend of of the vinyl and dead revival i I'm, i've always been a record collector man i'm i'm staring at like literally maybe two and a half thousand records right now um that's the format i was raised on uh, that an eight track but brutal truth did an eight track too but um uh the tape thing is 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 a collector's thing um not many people actually even own cassette decks but they'll still collect it because it's a part of the series, but that's a different aspect altogether. You know, people, some people collect T-shirts. Um, I, you know, I, I think, honestly, I think CDs was a difficult format to begin with, man. I mean, they, they originally came out in those long box fucking things. They didn't know how to really market it. Like, how do we put this in the record bins? And 
all that kind of shit. And uh, here we are today where, you know, the CD market is very small. You know, very small. I know a handful of people that still collect CDs. But, you know, like like you said earlier with music and stuff like that, it is a trend and it will come back. I guarantee you 10 years from now, there'll be a resurgence just like cassettes are right now where people will want to collect those CDs. And, and I have all my CDs from the 90s and fuck you and blah, 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 and, and get all precious about it. But, um, yeah, so vinyl for me has everything that I like in music. It has the artwork, it tells the story. I remember when back in in the 80s, mid 80s, when I was massively collecting, where, you know, me and my friends would all sit around in the room and we'd all, on a Tuesday, we'd go buy records and then we'd all come back to, to, to you know, one of our houses and we'd look at records and take turns flipping records on the record player and passing around the vinyl and, uh, you know, looking at, 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 at the destruction record and going, God, these guys look fucking brutal, you know? And, uh, you know, and I don't think you get that with CDs and you definitely don't get it with streams, you know? So for me, uh, vinyl tells the story, the artwork, the music, the sound quality, everything's complete there. So does that answer the question or no? Yes, that's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, uh, as I said in, one of the previous, in the previous questions, many times when I did interviews, most of the musicians of the band interview we don't know, listen what is currently happening in the, the metal when extreme metal world today, and that's why many bands from these years are lost in time for these common thoughts. So what do you think of the idea of being an extreme metal band and not listen to current music to current music? So do you think it's necessary to close up to the world and to compose better things? Uh, can you repeat the question? I'm sorry. So what do you think of the idea of being in an extreme metal band and uh. not listen to the current music, so the actual music? So in, into this matter, do you think it's necessary to close to the world to compose better things? Because many artists think that. I don't know. I mean, like, I mean, we all listen to the, the things that inspired us to create music, you know? It's not like you suddenly don't listen to those things. I still do. And, uh, but I listen to other things and I, I try and pull from different directions. I mean, I, um, I, I never really went like, oh, I hear what Worm Rot's doing. Um, maybe I can incorporate some of that. That's not really how I come up with, with music, you know? I mean, I can absolutely appreciate what they do, and I do. But um, it's, it's not something that I draw inspiration from, uh, you know? I, I come from... You know, like I said, the mid eighties, where you mm -hmm. sat around listening, and it was the imperfections of dig of uh, of um, analog recording that that made it special to me. It made it crazy, you know. Like you listen to those early Creator records, and and you know, or or possessed. They're just playing beyond their abilities, you know, and you can just sort of feel everything falling off the rail so to speak you know by the end of the song it's just holding on by a thread you know and uh to me that's that that's that's the intensity of the music you know whereas you know younger uh folks doing this stuff are gonna are gonna be more into the more clinical aspects of recording like what we were talking about where they deconstructed and um pro tools and that sort of thing manufacture the sound versus expel the sound you know no okay okay so now talking about your career as a frontman you played with mighty brutal truth and now you are with venom's concept and look up so how do you prevent your growth from repeating on both bands you know i i've always i've always written towards the actual song 
and if you even with brutal truth you know i tried to mix things up i mean you can definitely tell it's me or whatever but you know i try and and write specifically towards the song and you know venomous concept is entirely different than lock up it would be to me it would be weird to do the same thing and vocally in both bands i i have that that world over here and i have that world over there and it allows me to do music that i'm interested in you know the new the new vc record that has not come out that was recorded during the, the, the is 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 more melodic and um and that that sort of thing so um you know one does not live solely on one form of music you know for me personally um i, I like all sorts of things and um why wouldn't i want to record those Okay. Okay. So, and um, perhaps into this matter of brutal truth, any any new ideas for a new production with brutal truth? Cause with this season of bands making a comeback, classic still have a better boom for the listeners. The return of brutal truth will be a great idea. Uh, it's not really going to happen. You know, we, <laughs> we did we did what we did, and um, you know, I'm, I'm still. I'm 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 proud of what we did, but I just want to do different things, you know. I'm um, and uh, I, I'm at the age right now where I want to enjoy what I'm doing. I have X amount of time left. I don't want to do something because it's considered a financial call. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. So one aspect, that one aspect or one style that this be. The, the has a lot of development these new years is the madcore the madcore style where i think what when i when i when i have when i had a talk when uh other when the other staff from the the, the website he then we talk about the madcore is an evolution at the grindcore of more technicality so what is your opinion about the madcore with the they start with diligence um, escape life in the 90s well, like I said, you know, we're we were talking about the evolution of whatever, you know, like there was the baseless grind, and then there's the technicality, the math core thing, you know. Uh, you know, you can like you you mentioned Dillinger, is that what you said? Yes, yes, Dillinger, yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, I, I remember playing shows with Brutal Truth and Dillinger, and all those things kind of drifted out of, um, you know, there's there was two different splinters from say need to control one would be like um dillinger ish and the other one would be his heroes gone a more punk version of of that but it's interesting to see where people take certain elements and go with it you know um the, back in the day there was there was human remains i don't know whether you know uh human remains do you know them no 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 you should look them up okay okay absolutely human remains will you will like that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, okay the dave witty do you know dave dave from dave witty from like uh from municipal waste i am in it yeah okay it's this old jersey band okay uh, and uh you know it, it all started there the techni technicality that lethargy which was Eric Burke from Brule Truth and Bill and Braun from Mastodon. There was that. There's definitely some footprints to that math core thing that came from the super technical um, metal stuff. A lot of it also came from, you know, Chuck and, and Death, you know. I mean, they took those technicality elements and lit it on fire, you know, so... Um, no, Tim, for me, it's always interesting to see where people take a little, a little pinch of this, a little pinch of that, and create their own thing, you know. Dillinger really, really took it far, you know, yeah. and they were really good live, super good live. So, I knew. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. Does that answer the question? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, it's better. It's, so before we finish this interview, what are the future plans for the band for the lockup? 
perhaps a tour here in Latin America? And which bands do you know from this part of the world, uh, apart from the usual suspects, no? Christian, Sepultura, etc., etc. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, like, uh, you know, Anton's from Santiago. The yeah. record was was mixed in Santiago. Um, yeah, I mean, we all know, like, the sarcophago. We all know, like, the godfathers of all that shit from down there and, and that sort of thing. And I, for me, I hear a lot of it. Now, probably just because a lot of the riffs are Anton's, you know. And we were supposed to actually do a... A handful of shows before everything fucking shit the bed down there. Um, but, um, uh, you know, the idea is to hopefully have some kind of normalized world with the uh, touring thing and, 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 and hopefully people adapt to, to how to coexist with this virus so we can all get back to s some semblance of, of what, you know, our own personal, you know, normals. You know, so I would, you know, we have a new agent in Europe. We have an agent in, in South America. You know, I, I think it's, it's just a matter of waiting for things to normalize just a pinch. Just, just a pinch, just so you can assure that, you know, because like uh, the guy who, uh, you know, who booked, who, who booked us before, you know, he booked a bunch of plane tickets and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I think he might have got his money back on 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 the flights, but there was a point where I didn't think he was going to get it back. But you know, I think uh, with agent booking agents and and bands and stuff like that, they they they're looking for a little bit more reliability and in 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 what's going on before they make those kind of moves. You know, I mean, are are there any bands coming through right now or no? Yes. Yeah. Who's who's playing down there now? From um, and just in at the end of this month, no, yeah, I just at the at the end of June we'll play Epica here. Who? Epica. From where? Where are they from? Or, or like Epic in Spanish, Epica. <clears throat> from oh. Netherlands. Oh, okay, I got you. I got you. You know, uh, it, it, it. You know, how are things going with the pandemic there or the virus there? Are things going well. There? Well, what's here is, I think, it's very, it's always is very different than Europe and US. So here, here is the people is more well doesn't care about the virus here. The people doesn't care about the virus, and even the concerts are are are, are started happen since, when well, from from the last month, I think I think I think left bands come. From this, from Epi, with Epica next ne, in December, we will we, we have a scheduled tours. Well, no, we, we, I see, I see. Sorry, I see a, a scheduled tours for the next year, starting in January, February. So I think it's probably look up, uh, starting with this kind of scheduling. Yeah, it's just a matter of like everyone, uh, you know, reorganizing. I think you know. I, I mean. Um, uh, I know that uh, incantations going down to Mexico for a full Mexican thing like um, next month. I, I think a lot of people are more uh, comfortable with doing uh, in and out kind of things with that kind of stuff, you know, where bands will go, say, into Sweden and do like four or five shows because, you know, that can guarantee that, like, say, for instance, if we go down and and string together four countries in South America. And one or two of them all of a sudden go under tight restrictions. And then you're stuck, like, say, for instance, stuck in Brazil for, like, you know, five or six days. A, it'll financially ruin whoever brought the band down. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, 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 yeah. a, it's a huge risk for them. And it's a risk for the, the bands, you know, you know, it's, it's you know, it, it, everyone's just kind of hoping for some kind of more stability before they make these string. Because even in Europe right now, like, you know, people aren't doing like these big, massive European things. That's not what's going on. Matter of fact, in places like Holland and, and Belgium and stuff like that, they're, they're going another direction with the uh, with, uh, you know, virus versus 
restrictions. So say, say, say for instance, you, you're over in Europe and you're touring Germany and you got like six shows in Belgium and Holland and all of a sudden those places have quit doing shows for until then you're stuck in a truck stop paying for a bus paying for you know equipment that's being rented and and you're not playing you know so that's sort of where touring's at right now it's like everyone's really nervous about it i don't think many bands are scared of the virus i'm personally vaccinated if i were to get sick i don't think it'd be all that bad but it's more like, you know, a financial risk. I'm going out with a tour managing brewery in April and we will see how it goes then, you know? So it's these little baby steps back to like whatever is considered normal, I think. Okay, okay. So, well, Kevin, the sad times arrived at this interview. I hope you enjoyed this one as I did. And thank you very much for the time. Really appreciate it for you. For your time, the last album is a great work. So, any last words for your fans here in Latin America that expect so many that look up to to see you alive? As, and Metalerium. I'd say take care of yourself and uh, appreciate the things you have. And uh, appreciate your friends. And appreciate music. Try and buy. Don't stream. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and also, uh, you know, um, hopefully we'll see you uh, as soon as things, restrictions, normalcy return, you know. Great, great, great. Thank you very much again, Kevin.